Let us pray. Amos, I God, we thank you for another time of coming together in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness that have kept us throughout the week, that have made our going out and are coming in to be blessed. We've come this morning to return all the glory, all the honor, and adoration unto thee. Lord, we're praying and asking the Lord that your presence, your power, majesty, we come down and abide with us in Jesus' name. Anything that would deprive us the privilege of receiving from you, Lord, we pray. By your mercy, by your grace, O oh Lord, take them out of the way in Jesus' name. As we've come with great expectation, just as the Bible says, no one that comes unto you that thou shalt by any means cast away. Lord, we know you are the only helper that we have. And we've come with all our burdens and our burdens, O oh God of heaven, praying that at the end of this service, O oh Lord, they will all be rolled away in Jesus' name. Therefore, come and take preeminence, guide us, give us the heart of humility that will enable us to receive your word with joy. That at the end, it will be a mighty blessing in our lives in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, as we are going to look into the scripture this morning, Lord. We pray that you will grant us insight and understanding so that the entrance of your word will illuminate every part of our lives. That that way, Lord, no God of heaven will be glorified in all things that we do. Thank you once again for the answered prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Today we are going to consider our lesson in, in our Sajid Scripture Booklet. In our Sajid Scripture Booklet, page 224. And the title of our lesson today is Condition for Blessings and Causes. And our memory verse is taken from Leviticus 26, verse 3 and 4. Likewise, our text also is taken from the same Leviticus 26, verse 1 to 46. Before we proceed, I just want any brother or sister to remind us our last week lesson and tell us briefly what you gained from it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Last week's study, we thought about the year of Jubilee. The year of Jubilee means the, the year God had given the children of Israel, you know, commandment, a year of rest. Time they will take rest for the, for their journey, for their work. Because God we the creator us. We work for six days, our rest for the seventh day. So a year of Jubilee, a year God had given them them to rest and let the land rest. Even to up to today, Israel still keep the law because even though my brother live in Israel, said Saturday, they don't work on Saturdays. People that are you know in the that law of Moses. So that year of Jubilee is still moving some part of Israel today. So it means the day go, the year God went Jubilee to rest. As we are believers, God give us the time to work and time to rest. And God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Yeah, actually, the topic is the year of Jubilee, and we learn a lot of lessons because it was a historic uh, topic. Sabbatical year, seven days in a week, seven years. And after seven years, you have the sabbatical year, and the seven by 50, that's when you have the year of Jubilee, and that very year is the year of freedom. So everyone that has been indebted, everyone that is a, a slave or a servant or one way or the other, everyone, everyone that is owing one or the other, on that very year, everyone will be released. And we learn a lot of lessons, you know, how it pleases God that we should be free. You know, that was why he made those rules, so that there would be no occasion of anyone being under bondage. As he knew the predicament at man, men are passing through. So he designed the laws in such a way that it will be a relief to every one of us. And the same thing today, Jesus has fulfilled fully and completely that we don't need to wait till the fifth eighth year before we will not be totally free. We can be free at every moment based on our, uh, you know, our, our, our ability to respond to the call of salvation. So today, as we're going to consider our lesson today that is condition for blessings and causes. It's a straightforward topic, and we don't need to waste much time in it, but we are going to pay attention so that we will just pick a few words that will help us to be the beneficiaries of this uh, wonderful uh, condition given by God. So, like, can anyone help us to recite the memory verse? Thank you, Philip, for two of you are just raising your hand at the same time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The memory verse says, if ye walk in my statue and keep my commandment and do them, then will I give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield 
her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruits. Then, thank you very much. You have wonderfully you know, recited it. So, Leviticus 26, start verse 6, try to 4. So, condition for blessings. As we've seen, let someone quickly help us to read Leviticus 26 from verse 1 to 16. Leviticus 26, 1 to 16. Leviticus chapter 6, from 1 to 16. 26. 26. Leviticus chapter 26, from 1 to 6. Ye shall make you no idols, nor graven image, neither way of a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Five, and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will read evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. Praise the Lord. Still. Okay. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Nine. For I will have respect unto you, and make you fruitful, and multiply you, and establish my covenant with you. 10. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. 11. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not avoid you. 12. And I will walk among you, and will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Verse 13. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that ye should not be your bond men, and I will have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. 14. But if you will not hearken unto me, and I will not do all these commandments. 15. And if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my con uh, covenant. 16. I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror consumption and the burning agony that you that, that, that shall consume the eyes and cause, and cause sorrow of heart and ye shall sow your seed in vain for your enemies shall eat it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The, the, the question we may ask here is that what is the condition attached to these two first callings, causes and blessings? And as we read from the scripture we see what God required of us, if we want to be blessed, if we want to get the best out of the whole thing that God has made, he stipulated it one by one. We should be obedient to the word of God. And you see, the way the psalmist put it says that the God have given his commandment to save us. It will be something unimaginable that someone sees, maybe a provision made available, and something that has no benefit at all at all. He or she chooses to go towards that direction that has no benefit. So, what am I talking about? God made man not for us to be coming and gathering together as we are today, but something happened. The fall of man brought the essence of struggling. So, because without the fall of man, automatically when you are created, that spirit of God will lead you to fulfillment to whatever he has made you or I for. But for the fact that the first man, first woman has been deceived. So this life becomes a battle. And we are not left alone. God made provision to make sure that we are secured. And that is the sense of the commandment. And here you can see how he put it. Causes and blessings. If you are obedient to the word of God, God is whom he is. He changes not. Whether we obey him or not, it doesn't make any difference in him. But rather, when we obey, we are doing ourselves great favor because the blessings of God will abide. Satan will not have any reason to hinder or to truncate our destiny because we have abide the word of God. Now, the essence of God giving this commandment to the children of Israel 
they have been in the land of Egypt, and over there, they were addicted. The Egyptians were addicted to idol worshiping. And now God has, through Abraham, called them as a nation by which he will use to redeem the earth. So they need to, because as a human being, the environment sometimes influences the time the people that were with Abraham, they have gone. Or they have spent no less than 400 days in the land of Egypt. So as they were coming, they were just like, you know, part of Egyptians. And most of them have intermarried with Egyptians and have, you know, a kind of mixed multitude. So all those things joined together. It would be a kind of, you know, an easy access for the enemy to tempt and then lure them to the point where they will no longer have a helper. Because the only helper every one of them and us have today is Christ and God. So at this point in time, God now gave Moses this commandment. Tell the children of Israel. The land where you're going, there are a lot of idol worshippers. And besides, that was the reason why he was trying to drive those people away, for these people now to occupy the land. But if you will abide in their rules, obviously it will not do anyone any favor. You see, from verse 1 to 15, he now pronounced different kinds of blessings, as we, go, we are going to see as we proceed. Then, from that very 16, till, because it's about 47 verses, you see horses, you know, in, that followed disobedience. Not, not only, you know, but Bible, Bible made it clear, you know, disobedience is a direct ownership to Satan. Because that was the offer he made to Adam and Eve. Disobey God, and you'll be like us. You'll be like us, that strong lies. If maybe God is to open the eyes of every human being in this surface of the earth, nobody will abide with Satan. Now you told Adam and Eve, if this food, your eyes will open, you'll be like God. We are there like God today? No. Rather, they, 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 they open that door where God dwells and he jumps in. That is only what happened. You see the manipulation. You see the tricks. The same devil today is still tempting people and wangling his way into the life of people. He's deceiving people. So for someone that is knowledgeable, he can't pay attention to his lies. Because nothing, when, whenever he says something, he has ulterior motive. Just like Adam. So now, he has Done that to take advantage. And uh, God has to tell the people, listen, don't ever go this direction because the causes will not be uh, bearable at all, at all. We are going to consider the lesson in three subjects. Number one, the catalog of blessings for the obedient. The second point, consequences of disobedience. And finally, condition for restoration. Quickly, as we move to the first point, catalog of blessings for the obedient. What is catalog there? List of blessings. So let's look into the Bible and see the list of blessings that the Lord have for the obedient children. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1 to 8. Quickly, the first thing that should help us. Hallelujah. And the image. Neither shall ye set up an image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reference my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Three, if ye walk in my status and keep my commandments and do them, then we, then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the tree of the field shall yield their fruits. And your Freshness shall and the vantage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. Six, and I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid, and I will raise evil beasts out, out of the land, neither shall the sword go through. Your land, and ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight, and your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. Praise the Lord, God bless you. Thank you very much. You see, catalog of blessings for the obedient. In verse 4, they say, Then I will give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. 
This is you know, awesome. Now, if you are disobedient, if God does want to end this end today, we have seen the impact of climate change. A rich man that has no food to eat, that money makes no sense because money is just a legal tender that is generally accepted for exchange of goods, definition of money. So if you don't have food to eat, you have the whole world. It doesn't make sense. And the way you look at it, that was the first pronunciation God made. He will water the land for there to be food to eat so that other blessings will now key in. Because without food, you waste time. You look at the, the United Nations uh, what's it called? goal. The one, no, number two of it is food for all. Because they have seen that by the year 2050, the world population is going to increase to 9.7 billion. And yet, the land is not expanded. It is the same land today that every one of us, that is cultivated for us to feed. The same land will remain. Then, how are you going to feed that number of people? Farmers are reducing. Climate change are causing more trouble. In some regions, the land is dry and it can't yield. Yet, people are increasing. So how are they going to feed the world at that point in time? They now strategize all the mechanism, all the you know, smart agriculture and all those technologies to mitigate this very situation. You look at it in line with the word of God. Without food, you cannot survive. Without food, all your effort, all your money and everything, they are in vain. So now, if God wants to punish man, he says, now, the first step for that blessing is for you to have an abundance. Then he stepped down to the second. You shall be, riches can now, you know, key in. From riches to, you know, protection to, you know, security and so on and so forth. So this is a package where, you know, a package that contains all that will make the life of everyone fulfilled, but they are all embedded in obedience. Then disobedience is just like opposite of it, which is not good for anyone. So the blessings that follow obedience, what did God express of us? We as believers, we have received him, and we should receive him in truth and in spirit. And we should make our body, that he says that we should keep his commandment, keep his sanctuary, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are purchased of, by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we should live a life of a believer. Because when we, live a life, when we live a life of a believer, people around will glorify God. So that is the number one point. That will trigger that blessings. Then, the service, the church where we are today, we should take it as a house of God. It's not a place where we come and the summer will be going on and we'll be chewing chewing gum, we'll be, you know, the food will be going, you know, ringing here and there. We should have that, you know, sense of what? Respect. That here is a consecrated place. It's the house of the council, but the motive why we are here is the fellowship with God. So we should have that at the back of our mind. We will not be seen here. Fine, it is a, it's, it's a community center. But at this point in time, it is dedicated for the service of God. So that respect should be there. It's not something that will remind one. It's something that the inner man, the spirit that dwells in him, the spirit of God, should make one to understand. So that everything should be left behind. When we go out from here, we are in another phase altogether. So it should be a different thing altogether. But since we are here, that respect, that honor should be acknowledged. So when we are doing that, God knows that, yeah, we are reverencing him. We are honoring him. So that blessing will be there. But if we feel maybe that is not important, it becomes a problem. So when we are doing that, there will be abundance of you know, fruit in uh, fruit of the earth, as I said earlier, unlimited provision, peace, and divine protection will key in, deliverance from bondage, fruit of the womb, victory over the physical and spiritual enemies, and so on and so forth. So all these things now will be the portion of every one of us. And I believe that it will be so in our lives in Jesus' name. We are going to take question number one. Question number one says, what was the warning against idolatrous practice? Why was the warning against idolatrous practice necessary at this, at this stage in the journey of the Israelites from the promised land? Brother, please go. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because Israel, they have been in Egypt so many years, and they have exposed to their idols, and uh, God, they are used, used to um, 
this of multitude is among them. And the land they are going to enter, because the time God gives them the word, they see in the wilderness. And the Lord they are, they are going in, in is also at idol worship land. God is giving them the this Thank down. you very much. I hit the point. They were been a long time in the land of Egypt. And that is very, very remarkable. Question number two. In what ways can believers show reverence for God's house? Please go ahead. Praise God. So one of the ways that uh, a believer, when coming to the house of God, is we need to know that house of God is a holy place that God has appointed for service. So when we come there, we should come with the right attitude. It's not when we are in the house of God, we are just, we are just when the message is going on, that's how we are discussing our business. That's when we are in full, we are distracting ourselves, distracting others. So we should come with the right attitude, knowing that the house of God is only meant to do the things of God. When the service of is going on, we need to pay attention, capture, read the scripture, follow whatever you are asked to do there. It's not a time. Thank you very much. God bless you. All right. Question number three say highlight the blessings that follow those who are obedient to the word of God. Question three. Question number three. Very well. From verse one, God warning them. And from, from verse 1, God wanted them to verse 2. And verse, verse 3 is, If you walk in my status and keep my command and do them, then I will give rain in due season. So if you obey God, there's a lot of blessings, riches, protection, and long life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. A lot of them, but at least you have mentioned. So now, question number 4. What were the condition God gave the Israelites for entering into all this land? What were the conditions? I, I hope this booklet was distributed. And it's a pity that we don't spend time to read it. And we paid, I think, was it five hours? I don't know how we can benefit from our resources. Buying a booklet without reading it doesn't. Not only in the spiritual aspect, but physically, and you are spending your money for nothing. But the knowledge you get from this will go a long way to help you. Even, even if it's not for the lesson or something like that. As we can see in our uh, text, in verse uh, 3 of uh, Leviticus chapter 26, that says, If you walk in my status and keep my commandments and then do them, then I will give rain in that season. So he gives the conditions were if their obedience to his words, they will reap the yes. fruit of the land. They will Thank be blessed. Thank you very much. God bless you. Yeah, that is the point here again, the commandments that they should be obedient, avoid anything associated with idols. So quickly question, I mean, consequences of uh, disobedience. Leviticus chapter 26, uh, verse 14 to 16 and 28. Quickly, because the time is no longer on our side. Hallelujah. If you will not hearken unto me, and will not do all his commandments. 16? Yeah, 14 to 16 and 18. 14 to 16. Okay. And if you shall despise my status, or if you are so above my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. 18. 28. Oh, 28. 28 says, Then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury, and I will chastise you seven times for your sins. Praise the Lord. The, uh, the word of God, disobedience, not only that the horses, as we see, piles of them, it will be terrible. First instance, all the benefits, all the good things will be taken away. And if one was unable to acknowledge, but sometimes it, the nature of man what even made the secular world to develop certain uh, 
uh, technologies that are helping today, they look at problem. How do we mitigate this? At the process of thinking on how to overcome that problem, they invented. But they didn't fold their hands and say, well, that's good. So it, someone must rise and say, this is this ought not to be. So the same way God expects us is that we should think or reason when things are not going right. But if we are not so nonchalant about that, he will multiply it seven times. And seven times of it is 49 times compared to the first uh, hardship. Then he thought somewhere in the, in the book of Samuel, not, he didn't stop there. He says, if you are not yet acknowledged, he will multiply it again another seven times. That should be 49 times seven, which is 342. This, this is the third stage. And if you will not even acknowledge that very one again, he will multiply it seven times again. 342 times seven, which will be 2,401. Uh, two, uh, 2, so on and so forth. So that is how he will keep on until the person gets to the grave. So you see, there, we, there is no need for that. So obedience is always the key than to accumulate causes that has no remedy. If not maybe out of you know rebellion and disobedience, then it will stop there. Seven, 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 seven until the one third one goes to the grave. So you see, if for, for every reasonable human being, you don't need to wait for that. You will be more blessed when you are obedient. The, 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 the favor of God, the goodness of God, as He has listed, we follow on. And that is all they say, all, all about life. You know, is to be fulfilled and not to be under the affliction and commitment of both Satan and the and, and, and fury, as God says here, the anger of God. Praise the Lord. Time has already, so we may just jump into the uh, third subheading. Condition for restoration. Condition for restoration. Quickly from the text, again, I will just read because of our time. Leviticus chapter 26, verse 40 to 42. Condition from verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with the trespasses which they have trespassed against me and that also they have walked contrary unto me and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If, they, if then their uncircumcised heart be humbled and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham and, and I will remember the land. So the only solution, the only way out is repentance. Repentance is the only thing that will bring the mercies of God, the, 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 the love of God, hardness of heart can only bring destruction. So I think that is where we will round it up. It is always good to be obedient. We've seen the two-faced coin, blessings and causes. There is no neutral ground. It is either you're here or you're there. No two ways about that. So we try as much as we could to depend and to follow God's instruction. So it is very important. And I believe the Lord will increase this lesson more and more in our hearts in Jesus' name. Let's rise on our feet this morning as we bless the Lord. Let's exalt his name. Let's thank him for what you've had. The word is enough for the wise. We don't need to spend all the day talking and talking. There is a straightforward message. Are you obedient to the word of God? You've seen it's a commandment given by God. It is not a commandment given by man. But eventually, this is the word of man that will not hold water. This is the word of man that will not stand. This is a commandment given by God. It's the creator of all flesh. How are you taking it? This is the time you have to call upon the Lord. If you are being disobedient, this, today is the day of grace, day of salvation, day of redemption. If paraventure your life has not aligned with what we've heard, this is the time to humbly, as we've read in verse 40 to 42, that humility is very, very important. God acknowledged the importance of contrite heart heart of flesh, a heart that could acknowledge this is not right, this is not right, this is not right, and therefore God, I'm sorry, sincerely, so that whatever that has went wrong will be reversed. This is all about the reason why we are coming to church is to hear the word of God and amend our ways 
for our benefit. Problems that physicians could not solve. Problems that have defined every form of solution. Who knows where it's coming from? The message that this can be a strong access to resolve that problem. That is the reason of coming to church, so that we can hear the word of God, the key that holds every life. The power that knows you more than you know yourself. He that knows the origin of every situation. And he is the only one that has power to speak to that situation and it will change. This is the hour and this is the time. This is the moment. Pray and talk to God this hour. Give me the heart of obedience. I've seen the blessings that followed obedience. And I don't want to be a victim of disobedience. We've seen the causes. We've seen not only the causes. Situation without remedy. Other, instead of it to be pacified, it will worsen. It will be increased seven times. Maybe the, the heart may be in walking towards the direction of disobedience and rebellion. Forget about it. It will be, things will get better soon. Nothing will be better. Friend, that is the reason why we must pray this hour and call upon the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Our most high God, we thank you this morning for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. We thank you because there is no one like you. You are God that has made heaven and earth. You are God that has redeemed us by your blood. And your will, that, your will is that it is not your will that any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. This morning we've heard your, we've heard your word. And we pray, Lord, that your grace that surpasses the shortcoming and the sins of man shall be released upon this place in Jesus' name. So whatever that I've given Satan the, the, the open door or the privilege of affliction, of causing sorrows and all manner of evil, Lord, your power will arrest that situation in Jesus' name. The portion, the provision, and the empowerment of obedience, Lord, will be the portion of each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Those that are not yet saved, Lord, you will save them by your grace this morning. So that we will all be on the same page, running this race. That at the end, O God of heaven, we will all rejoice in your kingdom. We thank you, we bless you, Father, because you never answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.